Okay, I'd like to join Dave in thanking Cathy for the invitation uh, to talk to you today and um, to talk to you uh, a little bit about the activities uh, of BioAscent. Um, probably unlike m many of the other presentations this afternoon, you, you may not have heard of BioAscent. It's a relatively small and new company, just established in 2013. We're based just outside Glasgow um, and we're on what was the uh, Merck site uh, up there. And it started uh, with a specialisation in the area of compound management uh, and supplying of compounds for uh, typically high throughput screening. But as of uh, the summer, uh, then a University of Dundee group that was also based there span out into Biosent to increase the capabilities at Biosent to include medicinal chemistry, biological screening against a whole variety of biological targets um, in the facilities that were vacated by Merck uh, some time ago. Uh, the team that, that moved in to um, Biosent uh, were the team that were working in, on the European Leaf Factory, which Dave has just mentioned. And Cathy encouraged me to just include a slide on the European Leaf Factory. This is a programme that was funded by uh, the Innovative Medicines Initiative, a major public-private partnership within, uh, within Europe, to help academics and small uh, companies um, provide lead compounds for their drug discovery programmes. It's a programme that ran for five years. And over that time, then, 88 programmes have been uh, recruited over 17 countries. There are 72 high-throughput screenings run by the consortium, and a number of those have followed up to generate uh, what we would discuss as 18 validated hit series, which are high-quality compounds suitable for further development, three of which, so far, have uh, attracted uh, major follow-on funding. There's an example here where Parkinson's UK have picked up some of the output, uh, Servier have now picked up some of the output, uh, and in fact, IMI have taken on one of the programmes in the area of antimicrobial resistance into, uh, into further development. So um, this also, if you, if you want any more details on this, I don't really have time in this 10 minutes to, to cover a lot of the details, but I'm more than happy to cover more details uh, um, in the networking session or, or this afternoon. But this slide also encourages me to um, comment that, that we hope the next follow-on phase, the lead factory completed during the summer, but the next phase we hope is due to start imminently. Um, and so um, I guess watch this space to an extent because this is a, a major way that, that uh, academic and small companies can provide, get lead materials for their, for their programmes. What I really wanted to talk to you mainly about today was, was, uh, was Compound Cloud. Uh, Compound Cloud is the BioAscent screening deck. Um, and is a series of 125,000 compounds which are available for, uh, for target, targeted based screening. Now just to go back a, a slight step, I guess we all know there are many ways of generating chemical matter to start a drug discovery programme. There are, there are many different methods available, um, but I guess it's fair to say that screening approaches um, are one of the major strategies used uh, now within or, or a lot of, of many programs. So uh, be that fragment or diversity based screening, I think it, it's probably key to say that or important to say that there are a number of uh, attributes uh, that are key to make that screening approach successful. Two of those are undoubtedly the expertise of the group doing the screening and the infrastructure that are available, but, on cert but absolutely certainly then, then the quality of the library that you're using is a key determinant of the success of, of those programs. So what determines an ideal compound library? And this is the sort of thinking we're going through when we were trying to come up with the BioAscent uh, screening library. And, and of course, the compounds are absolutely vital to that. And we think about the quality of the compounds, the diversity of the compounds, the number available, um, and the intellectual property associated with those, those potential starting points. Other key factors, though, are such things as the, the availability of the compounds and the logistics of actually getting the compounds, the set that you want, into, into the screening format and ready to, for, you, for you to run in your assays. And of course, we all have to face that cost is an important factor there too. And these are some of the aspects that um, determined our thinking behind Compound Cloud. And basically what, what it is, and I can, again, I can give you a lot more details about the constituent of the, of the compounds uh, if we discuss it afterwards, but basically there's 125,000 lead-like or drug-like compounds available in this set. And there's any combination, that because of the facilities we have available at Newhouse, any combination of those sets can be, of those compounds, can be formatted to form a, 
a, a compound deck for your particular screen, be it a few hundred, be it a few thousand, or certainly we'd be happy to su supply the full 125,000. The structures of those compounds are freely available. They're available on our website. There's an SD file, uh, which you can, uh, if you register on the website, then you can gain access to that, to that file. And so that gives you the capability, if you have the chem informatics capability, to search that, that file to make the selection that, that you want. If that's not something you'd like us to assist in that process, then, of course, we'd be more than happy to do that as well. The compounds are, are actually all commercially sourced and so are IP-free. And we supply them in a variety of what we would call near assay ready formats. We can provide them in 96, 384, 1536 well plates in a various either acoustic plates or, or normal uh, screening plate formats. So basically making it extremely easy to take the output that comes to you to do the final stages of potentially dilution of those compounds before you put them into your screen. So make that uh, very straightforward. There's a ballpark idea, then the cost of those is, is basically about a pound a compound. So the more you buy, the, the cheaper it becomes, but nonetheless, if you think of the ballpark figure of about a, a pound a compound. So therefore, if you want to screen a few thousand compounds, then you can gain access to that for a few thousand pounds, which, say, pro provides those compounds that in a format that will be ready to go pretty much straight into, into your assay. So this opens up a... Uh, what we would consider a, a special approach into, into screening because basically it enables you to rapidly gain access to these compounds. If you want to do an iterative-based screening approach, then you can do that. By that, I mean screen a relatively small number of compounds that represents the whole of that 125,000 set, and we've got some predefined sets that we can, we can assist in that process. It enables you to screen that, get the screening results, and then think, what do I want to do with my next stage? And use the information from that first set of screening to inform your second set and select compounds uh, from further from within the 125,000. So basically, you can uh, focus in on a relatively small number of compounds using, using that approach. So basically, in what we would argue is a cost-effective manner, get some, some nice starting materials uh, for your programs. Uh, and I thought it'd be quite nice to include this sample. Steve Andrews has very kindly offered to, or allowed me to show, show this particular site. It's obviously from the local group here. It's from the uh, Alvarada Drug Discovery Institute. Um, and it's an example where, where Steve and Henriette actually um, uh, use the, the BioSense set to, to actually find starting points for their, uh, their programme. It's um, a kinase target, uh, and basically it's a nice combination of using the information that BioCent already have, and also Henriette putting her uh, own um, information together onto that to help refine that set. So, so basically you take um, the BioCent kinase set, you can then run a uh, further property search using, using NIMES. So what Henriette did was to, to, to generate, to, to modify those, those, those property and substructure filters. Uh, then working uh, using pharmacophore model and docking model on, on related uh, kinase targets uh, generated a, a, a set of compounds which were then clustered. Uh, individual members from each of those clusters were then chosen and that was the set of compounds that went on to be chosen to be screened. So starting from, as I say, I guess this was a subset of the 125,000 and now we get down to the 960 that were then an informed choice of compounds to go into the screens. Now, I. I'm not privy to a large amount of the data on here, but what I am aware of is that, is that using this, the number of hit generation procedures that were being followed by Steve and his team, and I know that the BioCent hits are now still forming the basis for some of that ongoing work. So I thought that would be a nice illustration of, uh, of how you can use uh, the, the compound cloud. Um, and so, and I say, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to discuss further details either after the discussions or, or later this afternoon. So that was really all I wanted to say. Um, so if you want to hear any more about Biosense broader activities, uh, about ELF, um, or indeed, of course, Compound Cloud, then uh, some contact details there. I'll be around this afternoon, so I'm more than happy to uh, talk to anybody about that. Thank you very much.